Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. We inch ever closer to the big next direct. And while predictions are going to start rolling, everyone's going to talk about the good stuff. So I'm here to talk about the bad stuff. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hope you're all doing fantastic. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and let's roll because there are nightmare scenarios. And I'm going to give you three nightmare scenarios, and I want you to tell me which one is the worst for you, okay? This is unprecedented. E3 is kind of happening, but kind of also not happening. Nintendo has announced nothing as of yet, but we're all pretty sure they will have a substantial June Direct. I'll tell you what's the nightmare scenario for me, but let's kick it off with three that I think would be bad for everybody. You know what's nice? A fun game. You know what's twice as nice? A fun game with zero price. You know what's thrice as nice? Random Dice, and they are the sponsor of today's video. A quirky, fun game that I have just been obsessed with, all right? It's available on your iPhone, your Android device. Make sure to click the link in the description down below to grab it now. I think it will grab you. Dice are good for rolling, but they're also good for pew, 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 pew. It's a tower defense game with dice, and you have a whole deck of dice that you can pick from that do crazy things like roll boulders, fire arrows, poison, and even shape shift. Now these dice can be combined to some mysterious effects, but every time you combine the dice, they grow in strength. So do you want a bunch of low level dice or a few beefy power dice? That is the decision you'll make as you compete against your friends and in random PVP battles. There's also cooperative modes and the sound effects are soothing. That's one of my favorite parts. The dice, they go pew, 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 pew. Man, I've got a chaotic mind sometimes and these dice, they just take it down a decibel or six. No joke, the game is legitimately good. So make sure to click the link in the description down below. Roll the dice on random dice. And every time you click the link, it helps support the channel. So I super appreciate it. And I'm telling you, your ears, pew, 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 they will too. Nightmare one is very niche and specific, okay? And this, like, I think this really would ruin it for a, a substantial chunk of people. All right, so the E3 slash June Direct 2022 is a nightmare if, number one, Hollow Knight Silk Song isn't there. Like what happens for that fan base if the game isn't there? We've talked about it being at Indie World. We've talked about it being at the Game Awards. We've talked about it being on Twitter. They said that like, you shouldn't have to wait too much longer for the game. And we've all agreed that it has evolved beyond those smaller shows and is now a big piece of a Nintendo Direct. But if Silk Song is not there, I really think that's a nightmare for the players excited for that game what is going on with the game. It was shown off at E3 2019 and nothing? That would be disastrous. Now, number two is much more widespread, okay? This is much more of a blanket nightmare that I think would apply to everybody or just about everybody. And nightmare two is that Nintendo is really struggling with delays internally. And so their June Direct is full of nothing but deeper dives on already announced games with a kicker. So they show more on Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which would be fun to see. And they show more on Splatoon 3, finally revealing why this game exists. And they show more on Fire Emblem, the Musou Fire Emblem. And they, you know, double down and talk more about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But nothing new. And it's a very slight fall, like we're seeing from Xbox and potentially Sony. Because development issues have just really, really come to a head this year. And we're having plenty of delays. Breath of the Wild 2's already been delayed. And Nintendo, they only like to talk about things when they're sure they can hit them. So they choose to talk about nothing because they don't know when they can hit them. They don't know what's coming when. They don't think they can get ready by fall 2022. And they're just going to coast knowing that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will sell double digit millions instantly. Now, you might be saying, Zach, that's not so nightmarish of a scenario because we still get Fire Emblem Three Hopes, Splatoon 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Pokemon. We still get four big games and maybe third parties can supply the rest. We know Hogwarts Legacy is supposedly still coming. They just bumped Gollum and the Lord of the Rings game to an unspecified date, but those are still four big Nintendo titles. Oh, and they also Advance Wars, which we've already heard about, and that probably gets a date too. So that's five, I guess. I guess that's still a good thing. I guess that's still a decent second half of the year. They could do, you know, Xenoblade in July. They got Fire Emblem at the end of June, Splatoon in September, Advance Wars in October, and Pokemon in November. And that's still like a 
glued together holiday lineup, right? They still fit it. They still found a way to deliver a game every month, except December, but a lot of companies skip December, so no biggie. I still though think that is nightmarish because we look forward for so long, specifically to this Direct. It's the big one, and they've already cut out Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 in this nightmare. That's off in 2023. And then we find out nothing except like, um, the games we've been working on, we, we're really hard at work. It's hard to be mad because the world has been a mess and things are crazy and games are hard and at least they have something. Xbox, no response. Um, but this still feels like it would be very disappointing for so many people who one are expecting Zelda. I don't think you should expect that at least 100%. I think you should be about 50-50 with Zelda. And then this world where they don't have separate presentations, they don't have Twitter reveals, but they decide to dedicate their June Direct to all the already announced games. That to me and my dog is pretty nightmarish. Oh, and the kicker, they do have one thing. They end the show with one, two switch coming out in August. Goodness gracious. One, two switch two as the big reveal of E3, as the big reveal of the June Direct. Come on, forget what I said. The whole rest of this number two, that just, that ruins it right there. If, if one, two, switch two, is there huge? Number three. Now this one again is a bit more niche, but I still think it applies to a wide swath of people. We've seen in leaks that Nintendo has been actively working on a Game Boy Advance emulator. We've seen the list of games they're testing and it is a doggone good list. You got Zelda, you got Metro, you got Golden Sun, and you've got more. They can do big things with Nintendo Switch Online. All right, they're wrapping up their first or maybe only wave of N64 games. We've had enough SNES and NES because they won't give us the good ones anymore. And it's time for something new. Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack added Splatoon 2 DLC, Mario Kart DLC, and I'm sure they'll show off more of that soon. So the price point is feeling pretty good and a big Game Boy Advance reveal would do a lot of PR positive for Nintendo and it would get me excited. I think those games hold up really well and would be a great compliment to all the regular monthly releases from Nintendo. But there is a world in a way where this goes completely cockeyed and wrong and it's all too like Nintendo, so it's totally a possibility. Nightmare number three is that Nintendo unveils the Game Boy with no mention of Game Boy Advance, even though we know it exists. So they act like this is a big deal and they're gonna drip feed us Game Boy games of the very old variety, slowly but surely, and we have to wait till next year two years, who knows when for GBA. But what makes this sting so bad is that we've seen it, Nintendo. We know it's there. It's not like, oh, maybe they're working on it. Maybe one day, maybe it was never in the plans. It's like, oh, you've chosen to do the drip, drip, drip feed again. We thought we, thought we were past that. You've started to get more regular, more consistent, more plentiful. And now, even though we know about it and it leaked and you clearly have been practicing with some pretty sweet games, you're going to go slow-mo and give us Game Boy for a year. I don't know that I can deal with the year of Game Boy and Game Boy Color releases. There are some good games, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. Knowing GBA is there and that they wouldn't just give it to us, that feels really, really bad. And at a time where everybody else's online is kind of flourishing, I know Game Pass has had a bit of a lull, but it's still great value. PlayStation's just invested to reinvent their entire PlayStation Plus offering and brought in plenty of classic games. Nintendo would, it would be a big miss if they were to goof this up, if they were to just slowly serve us the appetizer and not deliver the main course GBA, which we all want and which we've known they're working on. I really hope that they get this one right, but that's nightmare number three. So you got number one, which is Hollow Knight Silk Song just being ghost. Number two, which is they only talk about what they've already announced. No Zelda though. And oh, the big thing is one, two, switch two. Number three is that they mess up the online and they drip feed us Game Boy, even though we know GBA is there. Let me know in the comments which of those is the most nightmarish to you. And then here's my personal one. All right, this one's a bit more picky, but my personal nightmare is that nothing we don't know about gets revealed. That means there still are new announcements, but it's like Metroid Prime Remastered, which you've heard about for such a long time, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess Double Pack, which you've heard about for such a long time, and One Two Switch 2, which we've 
heard about for such a long time. That Nintendo does have a fleshed out full show, that they do show new stuff, but that none of it is surprising because you see for me, the best part of these events, the best part of these presentations are the big surprises. The time where you didn't think they were doing Smash and they did it. The time where you didn't expect new AC and they did it. The time where you never thought they'd sequelize that game or bring that franchise back or return to an old formula abandoned, but they did it. Those big, huge moments are what I live for and what make these presentations just rise way above any of the other state of play inside Xbox. They got nothing on directs because Nintendo knows how to dazzle. They know how to do the magical. And every so often we get a big killer presentation with a crazy reveal, like back in 2019 when they dropped Breath of the Wild 2 and nobody expected it. I really sincerely hope Nintendo has something up their sleeve that nobody's leaked, that nobody's teased, and that nobody has known about and that will make this show extra special. They should be announcing it soon, so I'll let you know as soon as they do. Ugh, getting close. It's almost June, and this thing is gonna happen in about two weeks, so we'll find out if it's nightmarish or dreamlike soon. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and let's get to our poll where I asked you, who is stronger, Bowser or Donkey Kong? Okay, this is not as easy of a question as it seems. Some people would just assume Bowser is the big bad, is far superior and stronger. How else did he get the throne? But even though 72% of you agree with that line of thinking, I don't think it's so easy because Donkey Kong, he's got significant power. And the other thing about Donkey Kong is he's actually proved victorious. Donkey Kong has won games. Donkey Kong has defeated foes. Bowser has never actually won. He concocts great schemes, but they're often carried out by many minions or they're more of a mental scheme carried out by some sort of assistant. Bowser himself does not really beat anyone. And I think his big stature and his strong breath are what really give him more bark than bite. I think DK takes Bowser. The spikes would be problematic. The fire breath could singe, but I think DK has the pure muscle, determination, and just lasting heart to get by. Bowser's quick to give up. He's done it like 30 times. We won't give up though. We're back with another GMM tomorrow. I hope to see you all there. Hopefully Nintendo gets their announcements rolling and hopefully they get ready for a great show. I'll cover it all with you. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. And until next time, my friends, thanks again. Switch Force, out.